So here we are with Jesse Smith, a biochemist who is also of the Christian faith. Would you say that the Bible and science contradict each other, Jesse? I wouldn't say they contradict each other. I would say, however, that the Bible and science could, that is, certain theories that some scientists propose are obviously contradictory to some biblical claims. Uh, but as far as God and science itself and the compatibility of the two, I would say that there's nothing incompatible about them. However, again, to distinguish between science as a process of understanding versus science and the plausibility of there being a God, I have to divide. But what science is, it's a tool really for understanding the universe and really how it works. The basis is, is you look at natural processes and through an observation of cause and effect, you come to a conclusion about how the universe works. You formulate theories and so forth. And so as a Christian, my viewpoint is that there's nothing as far as biblical claims go that is inconsistent or antagonistic to the scientific process itself. However, there may be many people may take issue with certain theories that people have which really are alternate theories about how the universe may work as opposed to what the Bible may indicate. People think of the Bible as more of a religion as opposed to scientific fact. Really, what the Bible does mostly and what people don't understand is it's not just a collection of stories, but rather it's an account of human civilization over the last 4,000 years or so. And really, concerning the historical veracity of the claims that the Bible makes, that's actually very accurate. Really, where science has a problem deals with the quote-unquote pre-flood time of the Bible. Um, and that's really where the Bible starts making claims regarding, you know, the creation of the earth and so forth that some scientists take issue with. Um, but again, that's not something that's universal among all scientists. M many people believe that the Bible says that the earth is only about 5,000 years old, which many might take issue with. However, again, that's something that is not necessarily absolutely presented by the Bible. What the Bible is, is a historical account of humanity over the last 4,000 years or so. And what it does is it begins with the genealogy of the very first person, Adam, followed through to Jesus Christ in the New Testament. And what Bible scholars do is they put all of those together, and based on those genealogies, they make the assumption that the world is about 5,000 years old. However, there's many variables that could be there that may make the universe older or less. So the big question, what about the dinosaurs? <laughs> Again, I don't think that there's anything in the Bible that precludes the idea that dinosaurs could exist. Again, the biblical account says that really at one point the world was very tropical. In fact, it describes the world as being a place where it never rained, where a place, it was a place where literally the water would come out of the ground as a mist. So it's describing a place that literally was a worldwide tropical place. Now for dinosaurs to exist because they're such a very large animal, they're at the top of the food chain. And if you've studied anything about food chains, you know that any food chain that has very large animals has to be supported by a very large base of vegetation. And that kind of a world very well could have existed in the pre-flood kinds of days. The Bible says that this world was very radically different than the world we live in. And as far as like what we find today, we find massive oil deposits, which are, which are basically like organic material that was rapidly covered. That's the only way you can get oil. You have to have very large amounts of organic material covered very quickly. And how else can that happen, I would argue, but by a flood, a worldwide flood. So the fossil record, generally, you know, you don't get fossils unless something is covered very quickly in mud and debris. Generally, when things die, they decompose on the surface. Why is there a fossil record? Again, like someone that argues in favor of a biblical account, or at least some variety of some kind of a, what's called neo-catastrophism, that is that Earth's history has been broken by stages of great disasters, would say that that's very well possible. 
Um, so again, um, there's nothing I would say in the biblical account that precludes the possibility of the existence of dinosaurs, either before the flood or after. People seem to think, you know, scientific, scientific world seems to think that, you know, faith is opposite from, from order. Really, again, like, that's a good point. What a Christian does is what they bring to the table as far as science is the assumption of order. Really, if you look back at the history of science, really the scientific method, that is understanding nature through the observation of cause and effect, was something that was pioneered by Christian theologians. And really what they were doing is they were combating the idea that nature is God. Their thinking was is that God created a universe that was ordered kind of like a machine. That is the mechanistic theory. And given that it was like a machine, you could understand the way that machine worked through the observation of cause and effect, the idea that God and nature are separate. So really, these first scientists had this undergirding assumption of order, that is, the universe is ordered and can be understood because it is a created thing. And so today, it's the same thing with Christians who believe in God or scientists who believe in a God or a creator. They bring to the table the assumption of order. The very basis of modern science is the idea that there is order in the universe. Really, that means that God, being that sense of order, if you don't have that, some order, this thread of order in the universe, and you take that away, suddenly things become very, very chaotic. And there's many different examples of how science over the last many centuries, different people who have believed in the presence of God have been able to approach science with the assumption that there must be an answer. Um, you could talk about Louis Pasteur, who didn't believe that life could come out of mud puddles, but there had to have been pre-existing life. And the reason he had that paradigm was because he believed in a God. He believed in a creator. So... Again, to reinforce this idea that scientists that believe in God, that doesn't hurt their science. In fact, it helps them because they have a solid conviction that there must be an answer to natural processes. There must be reasoning. There must be a purpose behind it because it's created. It's sort of a threat, the Bible, because it's viewed as contradictory to order, but their, their specific order within the, the creation account was, you know, that there was first light and, or actually first void and the earth was unformed and then God spoke light and then there was a spe specific order where things were created. Would you be able to explain maybe some of the scientific, you know, scientific reasoning behind, like, why one was created before the other in, in that certain order? Well, I would comment again that the biblical account and order, that is, order that we assume in science are not something that's contradictory to each other. Regarding like the seven-day creation account, there's again many different theories and many different scientists, you know, that are Christians that have various ideas about, you know, what may have happened and so forth. Um, my own personal thinking, I can, I can actually tell you what my thinking is regarding it. Um, going back to uh, Charles Darwin, he actually, was, he actually went on a tour, and he visited the Grand Canyon, and he saw that there was a river that was meandering way at the bottom of the canyon. And his thinking was, well, assuming that this river is cutting through the rock um, at X centimeters per year, how many years would it take for that river to cut through the rock? And really, that in and of itself forms the foundation for scientific thinking regarding dating of the world and the time of the world. And really, that assumption is that everything has always been the same. That is, certain processes have always been the same. And if you extrapolate those processes, you can find out how old they are. So that's actually a pretty decent logical conclusion. However, if you look at the Earth's history, things haven't always been the same. There's been many, this is agreed by all scientists, many major disasters that have dramatically affected the world in a very, very short period of time. Um, when Mount St. Helens went off, a gorge was carved within hours. It was about a third the size of the Grand Canyon. 
So it's this idea of uniformitarianism. So again, going to the creation account, you see something that was very catastrophic as opposed to a very slow process that formed things very rapidly as, to, as opposed to very slowly. And unless that thinking, you have that thinking in you, it's going to affect the way that you view the world. And so really the creation account talks about something that was very catastrophic, that was very quick, and could very well have left the impression of something that was very old but may not have been really that old at all. So why, why do you think that, what, what is your op opinion on the matter of, um, because science seems so opposed to God and yet they're so willing to put their uh, trust or faith or, you know, stake their theory on aliens or whether it's a cell or the Big Bang? Once again, I would distinguish between science, which really is a process or a type or a mode of thinking, as opposed to theories. And there are many different theories. And really, as far as ultimate causality, there really is only one or two alternatives that are out there. Either everything is created or it's not. And so there's different paradigms with which people can look at the world and through the world and different lenses that we can see the world in. As a Christian, I'm someone that happens to see nature and the world through the paradigm of God, or that is the assumption of order, the assumption of a creator. So much like the early philosophers, I believe that there's a certain undergirding order that is in the universe and is there for a reason. Um, SETI, which is a search for extraterrestrial intelligence, what they do is they actually constantly monitor the skies for signs of communication from an alien civilization. And what they're doing is they're distinguishing between all the noise that's out there and looking for some semblance of order. And it's actually very mathematically sound to detect order that's out there to the degree that if they find a pattern, they know that the chances are that comes from some sort of intelligence. On the same token, I think that we can look at the world and see that it's replete with order, and I don't know how you can omit or deny intelligence from that. So when I look at the universe, because I'm a Christian, I look at it through a paradigm of order. So you're saying that there is a link between intelligence and order? Very much so. Very much so. I don't think that you can really get order out of chaos. And, um, you know, there's all kinds of ideas about this regarding uh, chemistry, dynamic equilibrium. Things don't happen out of chaos. Again, SETI, they know that if they find a sequence of signals that are arranged in such a way that they're ordered, there must be some kind of design behind that. Um, for me, as someone who believes in God and also as a scientist, I don't know how people can look at, for example, uh, the system between DNA and proteins and really that entire process and how they're codependent and not see order in that. And to propose how that can come about from catalysts and muddy water seems to me to be very silly, to say the least. Well, I've, I've heard it said, you know, when when I was taught science in uh, elementary school, the three things that one needed was shelter, water, and food. And But we can't survive without light and, and other things other elements in the in the um, in the universe so I just found that very interesting uh, why why would they teach why would they leave things out like that mm. you know sure there was an order to to the way things were created well absolutely there had to have been order again the assumption of the Christian and the scientist or really anyone that believes in God Ultimately, the thinking is, is that there's a backbone of order in creation, whatever it is that you're looking at. Um, a good example of that is, you know, if you look back 100 years ago, many scientists believed that the cell was little, little more than a bag of chemicals. That is, you know, a couple of reactions took place, something that was very, very simple. It would have to be simple in order to have spontaneously generated. But those people who believed in a God, who believed in a creator that didn't believe in spontaneous generation, their assumption was is there's a whole lot there 
than, more there than meets the eye, which recent studies in molecular biology have shown the cell is just an incredibly complicated, paradoxically complex. How would you, having seen all, all these arguments between science and cre creationism, how how would you reckon? How would you because Ben Stein ha obviously has a expelled his video, and he he asked the the question, you know he thinks it's possible that um, cre you know that science can be taught from a biblical standpoint. Do you do you think there's some way of reconciling the two, and and how how would you think that would be possible? Science is only as good as the assumptions that go into it. If you assume that nothing was created or, si or creation didn't happen, that's going to affect the way that you view the world. It's going to affect the way that you view the facts that are present. Really, someone that believes in creation is going to look at the facts from a standpoint of order. And really, that's what you do in science anyway. Um, so again, like as far as like the biblical account of creation, um, that's a matter of faith, I would say. You believe that it is. However, as far as looking at the evidence that's out there, I think anybody should be able to, I think it should be an open table. What is the evidence that supports the idea of creation? And there's a lot of evidence that's there. And I think to, to not look at both sides of the issue is very one-sided. And uh, many scientists that support the idea of a god often end up ostracized from the community of scientists, which really isn't something that's fair. I think it's just all about looking at the evidence that's out there and based on the evidence coming to a conclusion. But whatever that conclusion is, it's going to take some degree of faith. You can look at the evidence and see that that evidence points to a God, or you can look at that evidence and see that maybe there isn't anything at all. However, my argument is, is really the presence of any order in a universe that should be ruled by chaos speaks of a God. When I look at the world, because I do believe in God, and the reason I believe in God isn't just because of science or because I can say I reasoned myself to God, but my own personal faith. And looking at history and looking at individuals like Jesus Christ and the lines of people that came to him, prophecies that were spoken that seemed to be impossible, um, the presence of supernatural things, supernatural evidence, I'd, I'd say definitely contributes to my own personal faith. But again, people that look at the world without the paradigm of God, I think, are going to tend to see different evidence out there. People that do believe in God are going to see things differently. Someone that doesn't believe in God probably is going to see more of the chaos that's in the universe. They're going to see among humanity violence, bloodshed, wars. They're going to see in life and in nature, imperfections. They're going to see things like appendixes that people have, things that seem to have no value. For someone that does look at the world through a lens of belief in God, they see order. Yeah, there is disorder present, but any order at all seems to speak of, again, something higher. Once again, the analogy of the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. They're monitoring the skies continually and most of the signals they get are utter chaos. But if there's just one little bit of order that's present, then the whole world will know about it in a very short period of time. And the whole world becomes very excited. So from my perspective, I have to look at life and I have to look at creation through the lens of order. And to me, everything seems to speak of God. Scripture itself says that the heavens declare the glory of God. It's very difficult for me to look at a sunset and only see gases and only see refracting light. I see that and I have to think there must be something beyond or higher. Would you be able to give an example from the Bible of where, uh, where, where it would speak of that a, that a scientist would be able to say, oh, uh, you know, that, that does make sense or that that's true in science? Again, like the Bible doesn't make any claims that are inconsistent with science. There's many um, scientific claims that have been made in the Bible that are actually very verifiable. Uh, King Solomon 
who was actually one of the kings of ancient Israel, described um, not just things regarding God, but a lot of things regarding the natural world around him, um, regarding trees, regarding animals, uh, regarding the way that uh, the way that clouds are formed, the way that rain falls, all things that are very consistent and very well understood aspects of natural reality. So again, I wouldn't say that other than the presence of miracles, which you mentioned before, the Bible isn't making any claims that are inconsistent with science. In fact, Timothy, that is, the Apostle Paul, wrote to Timothy and exhorted him to not be moved by oppositions of science falsely so-called. So even back in that day, 2,000 years ago, there was oppositions of, oppositions of science, that is, people who claimed to represent science and claimed that those points in science were against or opposed to Christianity. So that's something that's been around a very long time.